Hello, and welcome back to Science with Sully. Last time we went over uh, G stimulatory G protein coupled receptors. Today, we will be going over inhibitory G protein coupled receptors. These are going to do the opposite of are stimulatory. These are the breaks. So let's write, be sure we write that down. Uh, thought of like breaks, breaks on a car. While the stimulatory was more like the gas pedal. So we want to have breaks. We discussed how stimulatory increases heart rate. So it's safe to say that inhibitory will, in the cases in the heart, will decrease our heart rate. So let's draw this pathway and look at it and look at the mechanism that's involved. Here's our beautiful bilayered cell membrane. And in our cell membrane, we have these G proteins that are multi-pass. And this one will have one, two, three passes into the cell. And this is an inhibitory. So just like in our previous G protein, it will have an alpha subunit and a beta and gamma subunit. This alpha subunit is inhibitory. The alpha subunit, while it is inactive, has GDP bound to it. So, just like in our previous example, a ligand has to start. This is our start point. So, our ligand is float released from other cells and is floating around and it's going to activate our G protein coupled receptor, receptor, in this case, the inhibitory G protein coupled receptor. So what's gonna happen? Well, like in our last example, the alpha subunit and the beta gamma subunits are going to dissociate or split apart. So over here, we'll still have our uh, beta and gamma subunit while over here, we are going to have our inhibitory alpha subunit. And as we know, in this step, a G protein added another phosphate to our GDP to become GTP, which means it's active. So now this subunit can do its part. Well, if we remember in our last lecture, there is a protein called adenylyl cyclase. And it's responsible for converting cyclic AMP to, or from AMP to uh, ATP to cyclic AMP. Well, we knew when cyclic AMPs rose, it um, stimulated protein kinase A and proteins were phosphorylated. Well, our inhibitory alpha subunit is actually going to go and inhibit adenylocyclase. Well, what happens if adenylocyclase is inhibited? Our cyclic AMP will stay low. Well, what happens with cyclic AMP staying low? That will also inhibit our protein kinase A. Well, if protein kinase A is inhibited, what does that mean? We have no protein phosphorylation 
because remember, this is a kinase. And a kinase phosphorylates other proteins. So if we have no protein phosphorylation, no proteins are changed, their shape doesn't change, their function doesn't change. So in, um, we used a uh, heart uh, beta-1 receptors as our stimulatory, so we'll stay with the heart. In the heart, these are called M2 receptors, and they are muscarinic. So if our stimulatory increased our heartbeat, what do we think our inhibitory do, will do? Well, in the case of the heart, they will decrease our heart rate. I hope this video was helpful in showing you how inhibitory G proteins change intracellular function.